everybody it's dr g i hope you guys are doing well so today i will be making a video regarding u assembly step 2 ck as we already know thank god u assembly step 2 cs has been canceled it has no relevance to this whole process so we are focusing on aka the u assembly step 2 ck so that's what i will be talking to you guys about today so guys let's face it Step one is now pass or fail. I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about that. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? And the folks that are in charge of putting this exam in place also have their good reasons why they decided to switch and go pass or fail. So be that as it may, once you've taken step one, you have passed step one, and now you're ready to study for step two well you will need some important resources today i will basically focus on three resources that i think that you need in order to pass the step 2 ck exam i will say that when i took my exam step one at that time was still um score based so not the pass or fail so the score did matter for us so because of that i also wanted to focus a little bit more as well on my step 2 ck because i do know especially for imgs and residency programs they pay a lot of attention to step two CK because that's the clinical knowledge portion of the exam. So they're basically wanting to know the clinical foundation that you're coming in with. And of course, an easy way for them to sort of assess that is from your step two CK score. So because step one is pass or fail, step two CK, I tell a lot of people is now the next best thing. Even with the folks that I interview now, when we review applications or whatnot, we always say, yes, your score does not define you, but make no mistake, this is an important exam. And guys, listen, your score will get you noticed. I'm telling you this, and I say this from personal experience. It doesn't even matter what school you've gone to, I don't care those scores will get you a notice. You get you a killer score and apply to residency and see if that doesn't get you noticed. If it doesn't, come back to me and tell me and let's talk about that. But anyway, so that being said, let's focus on the resources, three main resources that I use. So the goal is to try to limit the number of resources when it comes to studying for any step of the US. About the USMLEs, you know, I was researching this the other day and I saw where it was listed as the top 20 toughest exams in the world as far as of 2023. And the USMLE exam was actually listed as the first. Isn't that interesting? You know what that means? If you've taken any step of the USMLE exam before step one, step two, step three, and say you had like multiple attempts on it or you failed it the first time, do not beat yourself up too much, okay? This is the hardest exam in the world for God's sake. So, and if you've taken it, you've passed it, hey, pat yourself on the back. You doing something good, baby. So when it comes to studying for the USMLE exams, guys, remember, less is more, okay? And that means you don't wanna keep accumulating resources, every kind of textbook you hear about, every video resource you hear about, every QBank you hear about. Um, you don't wanna keep accumulating these things, especially if you don't have enough time to get through all of that and have like in-depth knowledge of every resource that you have. It's the three resources that I think that you need to pass the USMLE Step 2 CK. At least that's what I did and I scored significantly well on my Step 2 CK and the scores definitely did get me noticed for residency. The first resource for sure is UWorld. It's UWorld, UWorld, UWorld for sure. So here's the thing, when it comes to studying for Step 2 CK, the better you did in Step 1, then the better you will do in Step 2 CK. And the reason is mainly because Step 2 builds on that foundation that you establish for step one. You know your basics, the biochemistries, the physiology, the pathophysiologies of these um, diseases, pharmacology, everything. You established the basic foundation. Now for step two CK, this is when we come to application. So treatment algorithms, when should we do A, when should we do B? Should we consider treatment option B because A is contraindicated, you know, those kind of things. That's mainly our focus for step two. So you world is the gold standard. Everybody knows that. Everybody uses you world, but it's about how you use you world that makes a difference. Because if the number of resources or the type of resources you use was what defined who passed or failed these exams, believe me, everyone will pass the exam. But the thing is, everybody uses these resources, but the issue is how they use the resources. A lot of people are all about let me get through UWorld. I just want to finish the whole questions in UWorld and stuff. 
But you world is not about, you know, I answer question one, oh, I got it wrong, and then I move on to the next one. Go through all of the other answer choices that were listed. The wrong answer choices, you world has a rationale for why they were wrong, and you wanna know that. It's not about racing through the Q bank, but it's about effectively studying that Q bank and knowing the ins and outs of it. Of course, be sure to do the assessment exam at the end of UWorld and that will kind of gauge where you at in the study process. And if you're not doing well, okay, those assessments are there for a reason. If you do the assessments and you're not passing that or you're barely scraping by, you're not ready yet, okay? You're definitely not ready. You still wanna put in a little more work, improve yourself, find your weak areas, hammer in on that, focus in that and get better at them before you attempt this exam. You know, the USMLE is not an exam you wanna be like, I'm just gonna go take it if I fail that failing. No, because those failures will definitely count against you. Remember that. All right, so the resource number two that I will be talking about is a podcast. If you're a podcast person like I am, then you're gonna love this. And you guys should already know this by now. This is a podcast put out there by my wonderful Nigerian brother, Divine Intervention, okay? It's called Divine Intervention Podcast. This podcast was a lifesaver for me, guys. Honestly, you wish I discovered this, like when I was studying for step one, I think it would have helped me a great deal, but I found out about it um, probably from researching online or Reddit or so, and then I saw people like talking about this and everything, I was like, whoa, let me see, and then I downloaded, add them to your playlist when you're going for rotations, when you're just like at your leisure time. I will listen to this thing when I'm cooking, before going to bed, it doesn't even matter, and they're not even that long. He tries to keep them like less than 20 to 30 minutes or so on um, there are some that are a little more extensive and then he also has a website for that yeah believe me i'm not marketing for a divine but i will say um i can honestly say these podcasts help me a great deal for step two there were times when i'll be like writing the exams and stuff like some questions will come up and i'll just just because i remember what divine said in these podcasts will kind of help me so divine intervention podcast is a great one the podcast is not a substitution for doing questions, but it's something to kind of fill in the gaps. Commute to rotations, you have a little bit of a free time. Working out at the gym, it's always a good one to listen to. Um, I used to, like when I'm running on the treadmill, just kind of put that, you know, my headphone stuff or have it on my iPad. So the last resource that I have for you is flashcards. And flashcards, I will say, it's really not for everyone. Some people thrive on it, some people don't do very well on it. Um, there are different kinds out there. The most common one a lot of people use is Anki. So Anki is really good, but Anki is not the best if you don't have enough time to build that long-term memory. So let's say you only have about four weeks or three weeks to study for step two CK. Yeah, Anki might not be the best option when it comes to flashcards. I used Quizlet and Brainscape when I felt like I had just a short period of time to study. So let's say you had certain areas that you were struggling at or you kept getting that wrong and you needed to get that into flashcards, something that you can go over back to back, back to back, just kind of run through the deck, you know, every day, then Quizlet and Brainskip will definitely help with that. I'd notice I've started using Quizlet more these days. Even in residency, I still use Quizlet. And sometimes too, flashcard study can be the best option you have at that time just because of where you at. Like for us in residency, there are times when, of course, I cannot go into rotations with my textbooks. And if I have a little bit of a free time, I use my phone because I've already had like these flashcards imported. Some people use pre-made decks, okay? So flashcards that others have already made for you, but everyone will tell you the most effective flashcards that you can ever use are the flashcards that you made for yourself because you know your weak areas. You know the areas that you need to target. That way, when you study that, you're just focusing on the things that you know you're struggling with. So the, if you can make the flashcards yourself, that's the best option. But of course, if you don't have enough time to do that, then pre-made decks, I guess, those can also suffice. Of course, I'm not marketing for any of these resources. I'm just here to tell you what worked for me. Um, when it comes to question banks, yes, we do UWorld, but if you've gone through UWorld, say you've gone through UWorld twice and you're looking for another question bank to incorporate into your study, the next best question bank out there is Emboss. I use Emboss, I love it, I love it. Now, the questions on Emboss can be a little harder than UWorld sometimes. Consistency is the name of the game when it comes to studying for the USMLE. You don't wanna study one day and then of course you take 10 days off and then come back again, study for two weeks and take a couple of days off because what really happens is 
you start to realize the stuff that you studied yesterday, well, you waited a whole week and now you're starting to forget them. So you want to keep that consistency. Um, people used to ask me, how many hours a day did you study for USMLE? And I'll be honest, especially for step one, I will go 16, 18 hours studying and I will always pray. I wish we had more than 24 hours in a day. Okay guys, so that's all I have for you as far as the resources. So just remember the three main resources that you need to study for USMLE step two are, your first one is your question bank. You use your UWorld. If that's not enough, feel free to add emboss question bank to that. And your second resource is Divine Intervention Podcast. And then your very last one is flashcards, basically to kind of cram in things that you are constantly getting wrong. Um, feel free to find a textbook of your choice, whatever book that you like. Some people like Step Up to Medicine, review the areas that you're struggling but just keep in mind when it comes to studying for USMLE Step 2, these three resources are just fine to get you to where you need to be. Anyway, that's it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and stop here for now. Until next time, your take here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you have any questions, any comments.